Today, I want to talk about a special fund that has been brought to my attention specifically for open source projects. And as I did a dive into some struggling projects like the XZ Utilities Serpent OS, now known as Aaron OS, and even Alpine Linux, all struggling due to severe underfunding, despite being open source projects that are critical to countless systems, there are a lot of projects that rely on minimal community donations and definitely inadequate corporate support in which corporations use different types of open source projects in order to leverage their own technologies. So today I want to bring the attention of this recently introduced FLOSS fund that seemingly has a goal to help FOSS project maintainers who are seeking funding. So let's break this down and talk about it. Announcing FLOSS slash fund a $1 million per year for free and open source projects. We're going to talk about the application project soon, but let's get to know this fund a little bit. We are excited to announce the launch of a dedicated fund aimed at providing financial assistance to the free or Libra and open source software FOSS or FLOSS projects globally with an annual commitment of $1 million. I will use the FOSS acronym in the post hereafter. So this has been in the works for some time at Zedra where we've been developing financial technology products and services built on the ever-growing FOSS stack. So what is Zedra? Zedra is actually one of India's largest stock brokers and a major advocate for open source. As they mention here in this blog post, they're built on top of a complete FOSS stack. And this is a major reason that they want to fund FOSS projects. They want to give back. Zedra also currently actively supports initiatives like the Open Source Pledge and Tinker Space. And their CTO and co-founder here, whose name I will probably butcher, Kailash, who actually made this post, and says, without the high quality FOSS projects that we have freely downloaded and used to build our organization, products, and services, we would not exist as we do today, free as in both cost and freedom, which is wonderful to see. An organization stepping up in order to fund other open source projects. The purpose here is a dedicated, no strings attached fund that allocates $1 million per year, and they're having a hard time getting their names out there. So that's the point of this video is to try and help get that name out there. As far as I can tell, it is a legit fund and some big open source projects have applied for it. We're going to get into those as well towards the end of the video, but let's talk about the actual funding mechanism and how to apply. As there's a lot of information here, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can read more about the FLOSS fund. But before we do, I want to talk about the FLOSS fund's motivations. As it's important to understand, here's what the CTO said, exercise our goodwill and reciprocity on a personal level as FOSS hackers, exercise our organizational business sense and strategy to help the FOSS ecosystem thrive without which our business cannot exist, encourage and apply a bit of peer pressure on other businesses to set up a structured financial support programs for FOSS, contribute to existing FOSS funding models and to the sustainability conversations and debates. As a bonus, explore whether the funding that JSON manifest experiment can bring discoverability to the financial needs of FOSS projects on a large scale. The funding that JSON is something important to understand. So that's what we're getting into next, because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how to apply. And in order to apply, there's a submission tool here in which projects can express their funding needs by hosting a funding.json file in the repository. How do you submit that funding.json manifest file? Well, you submit a URL to that location of the JSON. This file is machine readable and allows a crawler to index the project so it is discoverable for the FLOSS fund grant. Once the funding.json file is in place, projects submitted via this portal here. I'll post a link in the description below so you can check that out as well. And after submission, the project is listed in a public directory for transparency and discoverability, which is kind of innovative as it replaces a long cumbersome application process, including forms with a simple JSON file. I do like this method and it helps donors like the FLOSS fund quickly assess a project's funding needs and streamlines its outreach. So what does this funding that JSON file look like? And here it is, it's pretty self-explanatory. You supply some key value pairs, including information about your entity name and stuff like, are you an individual? What type of role do you have? What's the name? an email that they can reach you at, a phone if you have one, a description of the project, the URL if you have a web page for the project, and then we start talking about the project and or projects, including the repository URL, any licenses, 
and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through all of this, but now you can see the JSON manifest file that they go through. And you can even put in the amount that you're looking for as far as compensation, how frequently you're looking for this and for what type of costs you're trying to get funding for. They've really made this process fairly easy. And I'm very surprised that more projects don't know about this because even big projects like the XZ Utilities have had issues in the past trying to keep funding just to be able to maintain their compression tools. And the Floss Fund actually reached out to them. I think they're working through trying to get them some help as well. We all know that the XZ Utilities suffered a large blow last year in which a massive hack took place but was shortly fixed, although a massive maintainer was kicked out of the project because of it. Well, now there's not only an underfunded project, but it but it only has one main person maintaining the entire project. Regardless, it's projects like that that are underfunded and underappreciated that really need this critical funding. So I want to talk about the past year so we get a scope of what they've been doing. This is in 2024. We have contributed a total of right around 240 grand. That's about 7,260 per developer and direct contributions to projects like Typist, DuckDB, CAF, FransGo, and approximately another 180 grand to foundations that we support in the free and open source movement, including FOSS United Foundation and Oasis. We have a breakdown of the numbers that were contributed to each of the projects, and the hope is that the list grows, especially as the fund gains more reach. So honestly, this is just me trying to promote them a little bit, and I'd like you to do the same. As you can actually post about underfunded FOSS projects that you like, and the Floss Fund will actually reach out to them as well. That's one way of doing it. Of course, you can reach out to the project itself and also let them know about the Floss Fund and supply some of the links in order for them to actually apply for funding. Their team is currently conducting individual outreach to identify and support underfunded projects, but don't currently have a platform to really push this on. So again, if you enjoy using some sort of FOSS project and you think they can benefit from this, please let them know or please post to this discussion as I'll post a link in the description below to the FOSS United Forum. Another place is under the FLOSS Fund repo. There's conversations also going on in the discussions panel on trying to help also identify those critical or underfunded FOSS projects. As posted here, how you can help? Well, if you know of any projects that can benefit from this fund but are yet to apply, please share them here using the following format and it explains exactly what to put, project name, link, and funding needs. Super easy. Again, I'm gonna post a link in the description below. Now the team over here at Floss Fund is trying to explore partnerships with platforms like GitHub Sponsors and the Open Collective to simplify how they get their funding out. And there have been successful projects who have already gotten funding from this specific fund. As we see here on Y Combinator, the Floss Fund for free and open source projects. Here's some information from a project that actually got funding. They mentioned to apply to the project, you must place a funding.json file in their public repo, or at least a well-known URI location on their domain, and then submit it to this URL. Again, I'm gonna post it in the description below. That's already a 10 times more simpler than the 20 page document some of these other organizations have you fill out. Looking at you, Llama Impact Grants, OpenAI Cybersecurity Grants, NL, Net, and Open Tech Fund. Disclaimer, a project I co-developed was granted 3.75K in 2023, back when FOSS United Grants were co-sponsored by Zedra, the same company behind the FLOSS Fund. The entire process was over in like three days from the date of application. This is important to hear because it just demonstrates how simple it is to apply for funding through the FLOSS Fund. While traditional methods include filling out lengthy applications and forms, it is interesting to see how someone who was actually funded felt about the process. Also, there's a real world example here of a project that actually got funding and how quickly it came through. Three days is a very short period of time to get funding. It really makes for a compelling reason to use this fund. I have personally not received anything from the fund, but I would love other FOSS projects to be able to benefit from this. Here's another big project that a lot of you are probably familiar with. Make available funding information for floss.fund under the Nix OS. Yes, Nix OS is seemingly trying to also apply for the fund. Stated here, they offer 10 to 100K in financial support and have very special 
requirements for applying that we already talked about. In order to get on their radar, we need a well-known file that has contact information and email addresses on which we're responsive. And I'd be available for responsiveness, but setting up a new email forwards back to stuck on the current at Nix OS infra team. So big projects have definitely been applying for this fund. It's surprising that it is quite unknown at this point. Another one here that applied for the fund is Anki Android. So I'm excited to see what FOSS projects might benefit from this one. Let me know in the comments section below if you have a free and open source project in mind that could benefit from this. I'd love to hear about it. Also, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you, you're a true fan. Make sure to subscribe below if you haven't already and take a moment to hit that like button for me to get this out to more people. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. And there's CTO and co-founder here whose name I will probably butcher. Kalash, Kaliash, Kalilash, Kalash, Kalilash, Kalash, 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 Kalash. Kalash.